because it was all kind of motherfuckers and I didn't answer the phone when she called. So at this point, I felt I had two decisions to make. Maybe even three. Now one, I was like, I could not answer the phone and be cool, but then probably end up worrying about what she thinking about than me being stressed. Maybe. Number two, I was just like, ah, I'll call later on today. Then I was like, I need a third option to balance this up. So I was like, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, I can answer the phone, right? And then deal with this same old, same old bullcrap conversations about why I'm not her ex-boyfriend. It's like when music saying that I'm not to blame for the pain that was caused by another man. You see it? Said in my hand and shoot for another brother so I could walk. And I was a past relationship in grades so constantly. You see, she was dragging extra baggage into I circle constantly. I try to sit down and talk to her calmly so she can understand, hopefully, before it was too late. But she wasn't trusting me. Supposedly, I was supposed to be her man, her hundred grand. She trusts him like the back of her hand, but she didn't know where that star came from that was on the back of her index finger. So she went on calling me an asshole, but. Deep down inside, I know that I was still this good guy that she found at the start of this extravaganza, the beginning of this adventure. I'm the storyline of a start of a good book. I try to tell her that she don't have to look no longer, that I'm her man, that I'm here to take the pain away, that I'm here to take the weight off her shoulders, but she was steady throwing these 10,000 pound boulders in my character. The strong my whole me, the title script page. You see, strippers on this novel that was read by these narrators that was written in the journal of an author of a good black man. You see, she got me in a stereotype like Medea's family reunion. She'd be a mad black woman, lashing one time to what I believe a good woman really is, lashing two times to what I believe a good man should really be doing, lashing three times to me not ever calling her out her name because I respect her. No, because I respect her. You see, she had me trapped in the middle of this desert, fighting these vultures. You see, these scavengers were looking for a carcass to eat out gossip, and there was tears in the sand with no more love in it. And she wore a straight jacket made up with a mirage, the black man ain't shit. And it was half open, giving her a chance to escape into a new leather jacket with a fresh smell. But she wore a coat in the heat, in the hundred degree weather. She told me that she would never be my main stretcher, but she would nig like a space game. A fake move like a chess game, searching for a checkmate, and I'm just saying, hey, be real. Just be real, but she can't. You see, she wanted to be the king of the board. Anticipate my next move, a hypothesis for a scientific frustration, and all I tried to do was introduce her to reality, because this drama be nothing but fiction in her mind, and it was heavy in my eyes, and all I wanted to do was go to sleep at night, so I pray to God that he would lay this fire drinking bag, fire breathing drag on the back of my neck, and I would have sweet dreams the best. Me not being her ex boyfriends. I was like, I'm just following my day is. I just tell her, I can't be what you want me to be. I can only be me, baby. Because there's so much more I can give to you. Just by being me, baby. So give me some time and everything will be alright. If not, you got your way and I got mine and that's fine. But I can't be what you want me to be. I can only be me, baby. Thank you.